What if one gene was able to provide the same or better rejuvenation with epigenetic reprogramming than the Yamanaka factors and without the risk of cancer? A new preprint just released documents a gene, SP000, that turns back the clock of cells without the danger of pluripotency and the loss of cell identity that are inherent when using the Yamanaka factors. This addresses one of the main concerns with reprogramming as a therapy and is a great step forward. Let's look at what they found and why it's so important. Epigenetics is the layer of control that exists on top of the DNA. It uses activities such as methylation to control which genes are turned on and which are turned off. The epigenetics of cells changes in a predictable way as we age, which is what the epigenetic clocks use as a basis to measure biological age. Changing the epigenetic profile of a cell so that it is younger has been shown to make the cell behave as a more youthful cell. This has been possible with the Yamanaka factors. These are four genes, OP2, SOX2, KLF4, and CMIX, abbreviated to OSKM, which when expressed in a cell can turn it back into a pluripotent stem cell. So a pluripotent stem cell is a cell that can become any type of cell in the body, like a master cell that hasn't decided what to become yet. On the way to becoming pluripotent, the cell also becomes younger, leading to the process to be called partial reprogramming. The problem with this is that it can lead to loss of cell identity, which is necessary for a cell to become pluripotent. So for example, a skin cell no longer remembers that it's a skin cell and may become a liver cell instead. This means that the cell no longer functions correctly in its place and may become cancerous. When delivering Yamanaka factors in vivo, that is to living tissue, it's very difficult to control how much reprogramming each cell gets. And so to be sure, no cell changes identity. This is a major roadblock for partial reprogramming with the Yamanaka factors. But what if we could separate the rejuvenation effect from the pluripotency problem? The original Yamanaka factors were chosen because of their ability to induce pluripotent stem cells. Rejuvenation was almost a side effect. So the team at Shift Biosciences took a different approach. They built a high throughput screening system that could test thousands of genes simultaneously using a rejuvenation first strategy. To measure success, they developed AC3, a precise aging clock that determines a cell's biological age by analyzing gene activity patterns. This allowed them to quickly identify genes that reversed aging without the dangerous side effects, leading them to discover SP000. Now the name does have three zeros, but from now on, I'm gonna call it SP0. Initially, they tested on human skin cells. They used cells from donors aged between one and 87, from both sexes and various ethnic backgrounds. As well as AC3, they also tested against standard clocks such as Horvath, Grim Age, and Dunedin Pace. In aged human skin and lung cells, when the genes were applied for two weeks, SP0 reduced the transcriptomic age by 4.52 years, compared to 5.46 years for OSKM, where transcriptomic age is the age of a cell based on which genes are active, measured by analyzing the gene expression patterns. SP0 reduced senescence markers by 28%, more consistently, than OSKM. In skin cells, for six weeks, SP0 reduced the Horvath clock by 7.42 years. The authors also tested the degree to which the cells move towards pluripotency, which was, of course, much higher in OSKM. Meanwhile, the SP0 cells firmly retained their identity as skin cells. SP0 reversed epigenetic age by 13.6 years in keratinocytes, even stronger than its effect in fibroblasts, that is the skin cells. Delivering one gene is also much simpler than delivering a cocktail of them, as building the AAV is less complex. Dosing is more straightforward, 
and figuring out a mechanism of action is also easier. In summary, using SP0 brings the same or better rejuvenation as the Yamanaka factors across multiple cell types with greater safety and ease of delivery, and in particular gets around one of the biggest concerns of OSKM, which is the risk of cancer. So far, the paper is only a preprint, and if Shift Biosciences has not released the nature of SP0, this may make getting it peer-reviewed tricky, but it is certainly interesting, and I will be keeping an eye on it in the future. Thank you for your attention, and I wish you all well.